Hey there, I'm Gabriel St. Jones here with the Otaku Nexus, and it's my favorite time of year, Halloween. So let's celebrate with an anime review, shall we? Hellsing was made in 2001 under Studio Gonzo, the same studio behind Final Fantasy Unlimited and Gantz. But I will hold that against them. Yes, I will. Until the day I die. But that doesn't mean that Helsing is bad. We follow an underground corporation, the Helsing Organization, led by Integra, the heir to the Van Helsing bloodline. Although our main protagonist is Alucard, or Ceres. It's it's kind of a toss-up, really. See, we start the series by following Elicard, a red trench coat wearing badass who carries out Integra's wishes by finding vampires and attempting to make them holier than the Pope. But in a crazy twist that literally everyone saw coming, he turns out to be a vampire himself. And if you spell his name backwards, it's... Oh. My. God. It's Dr. Acula! Yes! Genius writing! Yes! 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 Anyways, we follow Alucard as he eventually seeks out a priest who has been converting people into ghouls, which are basically mind-controlled zombies in this series. Enter Ceres Victoria, a police girl who was stationed out in this area with her team until they all became ghouls. Opting not to kill Ceres, the priest for some reason instead decides to take her hostage, and that's when Alucard shows up. Instead of just shooting the priest through the head, which it totally looks like he can do, Alucard decides to kill two birds with one stone, and give Ceres a breast reduction by killing the priest through her. Afterwards, he decides to give the dying woman a chance to become an immortal vampire, and Ceres, being a not-stupid person, accepts. And that is where our story begins. As far as animation goes, this show is made in 2001 with a more conventional style like you would see in slightly older series like Trigun or Cowboy Bebop. The opening episode is probably visually the best in the entire series, with really fluid animation and interesting gunmetal effects to go with it. But as the series continues, the quality does start to diminish after a while. All the characters begin having these weird constipated penguin walks, and Ceres' amazing technicolored hair refuses to stay one color. All the backgrounds are also really weird, either being stark red, some weird gradient thing, or really reminiscent of Batman the Animated Series, which, given the options, is the clear winner. And lastly, the show actually focuses way more on static images than actual animation. The only really standout animation usually comes from Alucard himself whenever they decide to show him. And while I understand that the animation is meant to have this really classic look to it, really most of the time it just comes off as either lazy or underproduced. But in the same breath, I will admit to the amazing style of it, because when it works, it really works! When it comes to the audio, this is probably the most split I've ever been on any anime that I've ever reviewed, because half of it is so good that regardless of what gender you are, when you hear it, you will jizz just a little bit. While the other half is the hearing version of soggy bread. You know how when you make sandwich, but the juices from whatever you put in it start to seep through and it makes the bread really soggy, and then you take a bite and you throw up in your mouth a little bit? It's like that, but for your ears. The primary cast is great, with Crispin Freeman at the helm playing the best version of Alucard that man or god could possibly imagine. Then you have Victoria Harwood, Ralph Lister, and Stephen Brand playing Integra, Walter, and Alexander, respectively. These four voice actors are so damn good that I wish the voices in my head that tell me to kill people sounded like them. I'm just kidding, they're not in my head. They're real. Aside from that, though, the rest of the cast... They're hot garbage, okay? They're, I said it, they're hot garbage. Alright, just listen, just listen. A bit filthy, but not hot on the eyes. Set will enter me, and together we shall send this cursed town crashing down to hell. I mean, KT Gray, the voice actress who played Ceres, was probably the best of the lesser actors, but honestly, that's not really a good thing, because this was her first major role. And while I can't fault her too much, compared to the rest of the cast, her performance was definitely lagging. Then there's the opening song, which is like a mix between rock and jazz, and really, you wouldn't think that this song would fit into the vampire genre, but much like the opening for True Blood, it is done so ingeniously with just the right visuals that you will be genuinely surprised at how well it actually does fit. And the weirdest thing is that the composer for the entire OST has only really worked on two series, Helsing and Darker Than Black, which is so odd because with the work that he did in Helsing alone, you would think they'd be smart enough to give him more work. Literally, the only song I took any issue with in the entire soundtrack was the end song. It kind of sounds like some weird 80s soft alt rock that really doesn't fit the tone or the genre of the show. And when you look at it, it kind of looks like a bad A and B, you know? I mean, I might have liked it in a different setting, but for Helsing, it just did not belong there. And now we get to both the strongest and the weakest part of the show, the characters and the plot. As for characters, we have Elicard, one of the most iconic anime characters of all time. His character design, his attitude, his animation, his voice actor, everything about this guy screams badass main character. And what do they do with them? They make him secondary. That's right, as the show progresses, we don't follow the psychopathic, badass, deranged, vampire, killer, main character, obvious choice. Nope! 
we follow Saris, the normal everyday girl who gets bitten and turns into a monster and slowly has to deal with the- wait. I feel like I've done this review before. It's a vampire movie! Oh well. Anyways, while I have no problem with Saris per se, I do have a problem with her being the main character. The obvious choice is Alucard, but because the entertainment industry thinks that we need an every man or every woman character that everyone can relate to in every show to be the main protagonist, we're stuck with Saris. Next up we have Sir Integra and Walter, and I love both of these characters dearly. Integra is the perfect example of a strong female character in anime, but I still do have one problem with her. While she is strong mentally and in a business sense, in this series in particular, she has almost no physical strength. Normally that would be fine, not every strong character has to kick ass all of the time. But this lady is the daughter of Abraham Van Helsing, which makes it unfathomable to me that she wouldn't have at least a little bit more in the ass kicking department. I mean, maybe not to the extent that he was, but she should at least be able to handle some artificial vampires on her own. Come on! Then we have Walter who seems to be based kind of off of Alfred from the Batman series, but the old man can really get down, and as such, he was probably the most interesting character to me. I mean, I wanted to know more about his backstory, but in this series, it never really came. Then we have Alexander, the psychotic priest, who seems to be the only entity in the entire world capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alucard. And while we don't see much of him, as far as antagonists go in this series at least, he was the clear winner for most badass. And that's it. Yup. I mean, there are a couple other characters, but you're not going to care about them. Nobody cares about them. They're worthless move on. Now as for the plot, we start with Alucard turning Ceres into a vampire, and then we find out that there are a bunch of humans making artificial vampires. Also something with the Catholic Church. That's it. Roll credits, we're done. Honestly, I don't want to spoil anything, but really there's nothing to spoil. The plot really is that wafer thin. And even if there are some things that you want cleared up by the end of the series, I can almost guarantee they're not gonna be. So with all that being said, where does it leave Helsing? Well, Helsing is a classic that I believe should be at least looked at. The lackluster plot, underwhelming animation, and majority of the dub cast outside of the main four leave a lot to be desired and could disenfranchise a lot of people from watching this show. So if you think any of those things would give you problems, go ahead and just check out Ultimate instead or read the manga because honestly, there is a story to be told there but the original series doesn't do the greatest job of it. And if you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button, follow us over on Facebook and Twitter, and check out my other reviews over on my channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a safe and horrifying Halloween.